Something you might not know about Edinburgh is that this ordinary looking street is in fact a bridge. We're not on the ground floor here, but instead are actually several stories up in the air, trundling along on a fairly miraculous piece of 18th century engineering in the middle of cosmopolitan Edinburgh. Underneath this bridge though, there's also something kind of amazing. The Edinburgh Vaults, a stack of more than a hundred abandoned rooms that were once a thriving part of the city and which now sit abandoned, lurking just below the surface. Today we're going to talk about the wonderfully spooky hidden rooms under the city of Edinburgh. There are a lot of things you could say about Edinburgh in the 1700s. It was kind of crowded, pretty stinky, and noticeably incredibly tall. It had nothing on the skyscrapers of today, of course, but this was back in the day when elevators weren't a thing, and neither was health and safety, really. Many people lived in tenement buildings that could be as many as 14 stories tall. 14. That's kind of bananas when you consider that some staircases looked like this, and that many dwellings were held together mainly with wood spit and fervent prayers. Why so tall? Well, a few centuries back, to keep out the English and other undesirables, Edinburgh built a nice firm wall around itself. This wall prevented the city from spreading out, so it spread upwards instead becoming the most vertigo-inducing metropolitan area in Enlightenment Britain. This wasn't helped by Edinburgh's naturally hilly disposition. The city is built on some incredibly steep gradients, with several of its prettiest peaks actually part of an extinct volcano. Come the 1780s, it was decided that a bridge was in order to allow people to get from here to here without having to go all the way down here. So a bridge was built. A pretty magnificent one, all things considered. 19 massive stone arches spanning a 300 meter or 12,000 inch chasm. The opening ceremony was going to be a pretty grand affair too. In a tribute to the long history of the city, the oldest woman in town was selected as the first person to take a stroll over the completed bridge. Unfortunately, being the oldest woman in town, the unlucky lady carked it shortly before the opening ceremony. Never one to let reality stand in the way of their plans, Edinburgh Council cheerfully went ahead with the ceremony anyway marching her across the bridge in her coffin. As any sensible human might guess, this went down terribly. The bridge, having been christened by an actual dead woman, was enough to make many local people avoid it entirely for many years. Anywho, just as interesting as what was on the bridge was what was under it. The 19 arches were enclosed on both sides for most of the length of the bridge, with a nice little gap at Cowgate, creating a series of arched vaults of varying sizes. These were used for sundry purposes. Enterprising small business people set up shop in some of them, while others were used as workshops or even living quarters. Of course, as things tend to do, things degenerated. The vaults were damp and dark and a wee bit scary. Pretty soon, legit businesses didn't want to hang out there anymore, and the space became a warren of hidey holes where you could hang out if you were, for whatever reason, evading the law. Gambling dens and brothels sprung up, and the vaults became, by all accounts, a den of vice and criminality. Of course, the Victorians, when they arrived, were having none of that. They turfed out the denizens of the vaults and filled them in with rubble instead. The Victorians, whatever else they might be into, didn't stand for any subterranean nonsense. For many years, some businesses still made use of a vault or two if they happened to be convenient. But for the most part, the rooms beneath South Bridge were sealed off. And by the way, it seems like everyone was just totally fine with that. They went on living their lives on top of a suite of over a hundred partially filled in, mysterious dungeon-like void spaces. In 1985, however, the vaults were rediscovered. I say that with air quotes because everyone always sort of knew they were there. They just didn't particularly seem to care. There are various stories about how they were rediscovered, so we're going to go with the most entertaining, which has it that a clumsy student put his fist through a living room wall during a jam session with his band and in doing so, discovered a veritable labyrinth of partially buried rooms on the other side. Those particular rooms are now used as a ghostly tourist attraction, while others have been put to work as a chic event space, or as part of an excellent pub nightclub that has a wicked good cocktail menu and a cinema. But these are just a tiny fraction of the vaults that exist. Many of the subterranean rooms remain sealed off, unexplored and inaccessible. And perhaps I'm being unreasonable here, but how are people not more curious about what's in there? How are we just content to say that, oh, by the way, there are hundreds of secret rooms down there, chock full of artifacts from the past, haunted by the memories of the desperate souls who once lived there. But never mind about that, let's go eat burritos. Anyway, if you're in Edinburgh, I highly, highly recommend a vaults tour. 
In recent years, people have reported a veritable avalanche of ghostly encounters. Visitors have had their hair pulled, clothes grabbed and spines tingled. In 2003, the British TV show Most Haunted paid the vaults a visit and had a whale of a time. Hips were flicked, weird booming noises were heard, and Yvette Fielding absolutely lost it when a sound guy walked unexpectedly into the room during a tense moment. TV appearances aside, many visitors report seeing a particular spirit, sometimes called Mr. Boots, so named because of his fabulous knee-high boots. People often hear him tramping over the cobbles, whispering for them to get out, or if they fail to get out, pelting them with small bits of masonry. Hospitality, clearly, is not his strong suit. Elsewhere, in a room that used to be a wine cellar, it's common for visitors to feel a ghostly presence grabbing their hand, touching their face or playing with their hair. In a spooky way, not a flirty way. Some people even come away with scratches or bruises from these encounters. Could these be the unhappy spirits of people who once inhabited the vaults? Or just the spooky surroundings playing tricks on them? Whether you think that they're officially haunted or not, it's indisputable that the vaults are incredibly atmospheric. Go take a look. And if you feel anything funky while you're down there, be sure to let me know. Bye.